through September 22nd, 2020. Uh, tonight we have three uh, tabled matters from the last meeting, and we have three scheduled items. Uh, we have proof of legal publication in the Webster Herald. And before we get started, if we could stand for the pledge, please. Pledge of circle with this. We took the board's suggestion and we uh, we looked at um, the 5 4 and the 15 and we seriously looked at it and we looked at a house design which we we provided. Um, and when you start when you go through the process it, it goes around full circle. And so what happened was the owners have decided that there's there's one house, and that's the house that we've provided, and that house is essentially 30 feet wide. Um, it's not going to be exactly that because the the 40 feet's on a skew, and we're not using five foot exactly on the on the short side. Um, but what we're doing is providing a two car garage. A two car garage. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll uh, weigh heavily on uh, Barry's experience as a builder. Uh, Two-car garage, uh, and I'm showing... I'm showing our garage at 2325. A two-car garage is at 2325. It's very, very tight, especially when you're when we're trying to get two cars off the street and in the garage. And side by side, it's going to be very, very tight, opening doors and that sort of thing. Additionally, what we're showing is a entryway that we're, it's a, going to be obviously going to be a 3 0 door, uh, and we've shown a six foot entryway. <clears throat> well, that's pretty tight in itself because you've got a foot and a half on either side of the door for to kick your shoes off or hang a coat or do whatever. Um, so that's that is uh, that's why we circle back on this. Also, there's going to be an elevator. It's going to be an internal elevator, as opposed to uh, 340 Lake Road, which is an external elevator. Ours is within the structure itself. Um, I think for the house at, at this height, you need you need an elevator. Uh, but what that does is it takes up room inside the structure itself. And we're worried about wheelchair accessibility because, you know, we don't like to think of things like that. But when we, when I built my house uh, 32 years ago, I did a first floor master with a big lot with open doors because I wanted wheelchair <coughs> accessibility. My wife needed it, and she so she used it. And we don't ever know when we're going to use it. So that the internal um, traffic within the first floor and second floor has to take into consideration that there's going to be a, a, an elevator inside the structure itself. <clears throat> uh, we like to use trusses to stand the, the, the width to maximize the open space. We don't have the luxury of, as we do on 340, uh, putting in supports and that sort of thing. Um, because we're just, it just configures differently. So given those, and, and we have done a little bit of research in terms of the neighborhood character, and we, this configuration that we have is within the character of that neighborhood, as you can see from the various 
plans and homes and, and where those homes are situated relative to each other. Some have, in fact, a three and a half foot minimum size setback that was added by the Zoning Board of Appeals. So there's some, there's some, we are in character with it. Now what we were planning to do <clears throat> was to provide a 10 foot wide reciprocal easement for maintenance agreement down between the structures. So we're still proposing to do that so we can get from Lake Road to the shoreline of, uh, of the bay. Uh, height wise, uh, given some two foot uh, structural lambs that we're going to need, um, we took this drawing of the house and that comes out to 39 feet. So we've given it a go and we can't see how you can develop a significant house unless you use these dimensions and uh, fully well recognizing that, that you're going to have all of your ductwork is going to be in the ceiling, so we need room for that. Um, this is a difficult build on a 40-foot wide lot, which is, which is very, very tight, but I think it will look very, very nice, and it will be in keeping with the neighborhood. With that, I'll answer any questions you might have. some homework and came up with setbacks that were on the uh, adjacent lots and as she stated in the last in the last meeting five foot was pretty standard on one side but with a little bit wider space on the other um, I, I guess I, I understand where you're coming from but we've kind of established some sort of precedent there. Um, myself, I, the reciprocal easement is a good idea, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll pull the board here and see what their opinions are of that, because we're looking for access, a way to get around the back of the building. Um, but I, what I was hearing at the last meeting was that some of the board members were favoring shifting the house to one side and having at least seven or eight feet on the other. And I don't know if they've had a change of heart after. I went back there again a couple times and looked at the other houses and so on. Well, take, so, a look at a, take a look at a two-car garage, yeah. how much space that takes up. Take a look at a reasonable entry and how much space that takes up. And you, and you come to the conclusion that that's, the, that's where it needs to be uh, in order to to do it in a way that's befitting the, the, the neighborhood. Except that, I guess I'm confused, the, the homeowners that had to replace their houses um, at 189, at 193, um, at 195, I don't remember if 203 was along that stretch or not, they had to build a house that fit, the widest one I think is 25 feet. So, so clearly it's doable. They all have two car garages. Um, they do have, um, one of them does have a, maybe two, has a, a side entrance that the main house is 25 feet and then, no, I'm sorry, the main house is 22 feet and then there's an allowance made for, for steps in an entryway along the side at 189. But, but all of those homeowners who had already lived there and then needed to replace their house had to maintain the side setbacks that were set by the board. Now I understand there are properties further up Lake Road that are closer together, they're on the lakeside and they're really a different neighborhood than what was established along this section of the sandbar on the bayside. Well, and that's all the same data that I think we shared with you the last time um, and when we were expecting this material from you earlier so that we could review it. We don't want a side entrance. But I agree with you that if you have a side entrance, you can probably go down past the garage and then go into your house in a side entrance. But that's not really 
a very good design. I can understand you're not wanting a side entrance, <coughs> but you have a 40 foot wide lot. Yes. You're, you're trying to overbuild the lot. It's out of keeping with this immediate neighborhood as established by the board, zoning board when the houses were being rebuilt after the tragedy. Um, we've done a lot of work in this area to try to create lighting for the neighbors on at least one side of the house and also to um, keep things within the code as much as possible. You're simply trying to put a 10-pound load into a 5-pound bag here. It's not acceptable. We're not. Uh, house number 213, which is on the south side of the road, you'll see from those aerials, uh, they have exactly that. And we're not trying to do that. What we're trying to do is put a significant house on the 40-foot wide lot. That's what we're trying to do with an entryway that's visible from the street and a garage that you can take the cars and actually put them in the garage and not have to park on the street or in your side yard. To, uh, to afford parking space. And then you've got so the wrong lot. Is it 213 a double lot? No, it's not. They're, they're very tight together. You've got a picture of it. I've got another one here, Josh, if you want to pass it around. And they're certainly not 10 feet apart. <clears throat> All right, 213 was granted variances in um, the year 2013 for an east side setback of 5 feet and a west side setback of 9 feet. The builder erroneously placed the house where they did and then came back to the board in 2015 for a west side setback of 7.8 feet based on the mismeasure. But still, they had a 5 foot and a 7.8 foot setback, but that's not what was originally approved for. The house to the west is not 5, they don't have 10 feet between the houses. There's, there's probably 7 at most. Um, and you can see from, the, from that a picture straight on uh, that that's the case. And what we're saying is this is, the, this is really the character of the neighborhood. Well, and 213 is the anomaly, isn't it? 213 is the one there's, to the left. There's one and the one to the right very close to it. That is biased to the right, and I believe that would be 213, and then the rest are biased to the left. 213 is to the left on that picture I've just brought over. And the one to the right, as you're looking at the picture, is very close to it. The one to the right is a double lot. Oops. <laughs> Bob, I don't know if you followed this from the last meeting, but they're asking for five foot side setbacks because because you you were absent last meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. And Corinne uh, brought up the point that all the houses were skewed to one side, so that one, one side setback was seven, between 7.8 and 9 feet, not five on both sides. So um, that, that's what the discussion is about, actually. Right, 211 is the double. 213, um, actually 213 was built before the fire, mm. or was approved before the fire, um, and that one was biased in the other direction, but everything else has been the houses have been biased to the east. And then 213 was put in the wrong place, too. But if I look at 181, I'm sorry, 189 and 193 and 195, those were all, they got a large setback on one side of the house and a smaller setback on the other side of the house so that they weren't right on top of each other. And what we are trying to do is get a 15-foot gap between the houses without penalizing each homeowner on both sides of the house. Right. Now, we understood that from the last meeting. But nothing changed, right? And we couldn't, or something did change. We did go through the process of 
of, of looking at houses and how they were configured and that sort of thing. And so that did happen. Okay. And that's why we uh, we came with that. We don't want a side entrance. I think I think a significant house ought to be the entry way ought to be seen from the street, and uh, and not you have to search around the side of the house for it. You have an opinion, Don? We're dealing with a clean slate uh, here. We've established a precedent uh, with other applications. Um, you know, nothing's set in concrete. Uh, I know what the applicant wants, but sometimes what we want, we can't get. Um, we have to be flexible. Well. We're looking at two things. Uh, we're looking at consistency, aesthetics, and then access to the bay. They could provide the access to the bay with the reciprocal mm -hmm. easement. I think the question at hand is, when these homes are 10 feet apart, is it not, is it just going to look out of whack, out of character with the neighborhood or not? I, I understand what we did in the past. It was kind of... It was kind of nice for us because it happened one after another, and there was some momentum to the whole. <clears throat> then I remember I was so, I was here. Um, I, I understand what the applicant is saying. It would have been nice if there was a, somewhat of a concession to create some more space between those houses. Um, to change gears. The height issue. What is that? A ten foot ceiling on the first floor. Uh, I'm seeing thirteen point five. Yeah, two two foot off from the land. That's eleven and a half. Uh, but you know, we can that can go down a little bit. I was just scaling the that particular drawing. Yeah. So you need to look at two foot plus to clear that's, span that. Yeah. yeah, because it looked like they were they were using a two foot lamb, so putting a a lamb all the way across. Mm -hmm opening up the structure so that we have visibility of the lake and the, the bay and all those kinds of things. More open layout inside the, the structure itself. So the average height is 39 feet. What's the peak height? Oh, that would be another uh, three to four feet above that 42. So you're going average height on the roof? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Are there eight foot ceilings on the second floor, I'm assuming? Or the third, it would yeah. be third floor, third floor. Yeah, eight foot, nine foot ceilings maybe. Uh, because we're halfway up the peak, so it's gonna be it's gonna be tight. I guess as far as the height goes, you you know, there's there's two ways to look at this. You can bring the roof down and and it'll just look cheap. The roof has a little more pitch, which is more attractive. But I don't think we should go excessive ceiling heights since you're already over the allowable code, allowable height for code. In other words, if you're too high with the house, don't go to the 10-foot ceiling. Go with 9-foot ceiling. Don't go with 9-foot ceiling on the second floor. Go with 8-foot ceiling. In other words, try to comply. Right. <laughs> and still have a nice house. Yeah. Do, do what you can to comply. And the same thing with the, with the garage height. Just... Make it just as high as it needs to be. Right. To, to or ten and a half there with the garage the door and yeah. those kind of things. So that's not that's not out of I mean ten and a half is not not huge, maybe half a foot bigger than, than needed. Again, I just scaled the drawing mm -hmm. um, that was provided. Nice looking structure. It's irrelevant <laughs> to the code. <laughs> You're not, you're not passing any of the standards that we need in order to grant a variance. This is what you want to have. This is, you don't want this. You want 10 foot ceilings. You want 10 and a half foot. You, you, you want, you want, you want, but it doesn't meet any of the standards necessary in order for a, this board to grant a variance. I mean, it is substantial. It is completely self-created. It's, uh, detriment to the neighbors as the board has established. Um, you, you're just 
not there and by ignoring and what this board asked you to do and basically coming back in and saying this is what we want to do um, you've put yourself in a position where I would vote to deny this in a New York minute well we haven't done any of those things that you, you mentioned we did circle around on it but when we had a, a design that that it's pretty hard to uh, argue with. We didn't. It's not self-created. The lot's 40 feet wide. The only reason we created it Don't buy is the we lot. bought it. Don't it's, buy the lot. That's what you're saying. Build a house. Have a, you have a lot. Don't have an entry. You, you have yeah. a lot. Build a house that fits on the lot. Don't have an entry that that looks good from the street, and don't have a double car garage. You. More or less a trailer that you're going to put on a lot. That's going to have just show a garage, and you walk down a path and into the side. I'm sorry, but that's that's where we are. Not at all, because the other neighbors have been able to work within these guidelines. You simply <coughs> haven't even bothered to try. We have bothered to try. No, you have try. not. You went around in a loop and came back in and said, "We want to do what we want to do." Ten foot ceilings, ten and a half foot in the garage. This this is not. Let's, let me ask you this, Al. Um, if you reduce the garage width to 22, which is kind of a standard garage, that we were, I, I know all, all the rooms in the house become two feet less, and you could still have the front. Could you, could you reduce that by two feet and still have a decent plan? To 21 and a half? Well, you're showing 24 on the garage and six feet on the Yeah, 20, actually I'm showing that. So I'd be 21 and a quarter. Uh, I guess I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to everybody on the board. I, I respect all their opinions. Um, and we're looking for something, some effort to comply. I know you're not going to comply. You need variances to build a house. But we need some concession on the height and the width in order to make it palatable to this board. Yeah. And I'm I mean, struggling with trying to fit two cars next to each other in a garage and still be able to open the doors up. That's the, that's the struggle. So I guess uh, I could talk with the, uh, the owners of, that own the property and ask them if, if that's something they can do. I mean, uh, our, our standard garage on house is 22 feet. I mean, that. On, on, on a standard house, 22 is a typical garage. Some are 21, outside, 21 yeah, outside. Half, but 22 out, out, okay. outside the outside. I said I rely on you, and, 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 I, and, I, and I will. But, yeah, but what, I've, what, I've, what I'm hearing myself, I, I like your reciprocal easement, but what I'm hearing from the other members of the board is that they need to see some sort of concession to try, even though you can't comply exactly like the other homes, they want to see some kind of concession to do I see effort to, to comply? Well, it's not just the effort. It's that we've. It's it's not the effort. It's that there are variances that have been established in the neighborhood that say that this this is what we're doing here because basically this is essentially level ground at this point, right. and so that's what was done back in 2013 and forward, and uh, I make all the effort you want, comply with what was done previously, or I will vote to deny. To, I'm looking at the map, and if you were able to make those houses narrower on opposite sides, you could wind up with close to 15 feet between the houses, which is what we've what we've looked for in the past, you're already, you're already 18, you'd already be 18 feet from the house to the east. Here we'd be, <coughs> 22 feet. feet, we'd be 13 feet between the houses. <coughs> we'd add a foot and a quarter to it. <coughs> so we'd be 13 feet between the houses. And we can skip on the uh, height of the ceilings a little bit and bring that down to some other number. Uh, and we're just trying to build a house that's that's 
nice from the street, not trying to, uh, that's, that's, that's the long and short of it. You have to build a house that allows us to meet the standards. It doesn't matter if it looks nice from the street. It has to meet the standards for us to grant you a variance. And I've shown with the overhead views where that's not the case. The board would disagree. Okay. I'm sorry, what overhead views are you referring to? That we've got a lot of information today. The photographs that came around showing the overhead view of all the structures and, the, and how they sit, they're situated with each other. We should have gotten a packet a week ago of everything to look at. So this is the overhead views of the houses along this stretch, and then there's this one. There is so the you overhead views. The one that I did. Yes. Oh. Each one is individual. So, so I have one that is the homes from 42 to 68. Mine is, is from. Uh, and you've got the area that we're actually looking at. 213. And then 16, 30, and 34. 16, You're making a real hash of this. It, it, it's it's Seriously? difficult Seriously. to see your point when we don't have all of the information that you've presented. It's on our tablet that we received right now, but I'm, I'm flipping through a lot of different views, and, and at the end of the day, we, we've already... The people that lived there originally, that lost their houses, asked for larger footprints when they came back to rebuild, and the board denied it and forced them into the sizes that are reflected on the map and on the table and in the minutes. So I'm, I'm struggling with, I tell the people it, it 189 or 193 whose house and possessions they lost, that yeah, I understand you wanted five feet and we told you you had to have ten, um, but don't worry about that, this is different. I, I, I'm struggling to see what the difference is. It, it, to, to Eric's point, it's a blank sheet of paper. No, they, 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 they don't apply. That's why everybody's house is you. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Chairman. What, step up to the mic? What? My name is John Kishani. I'm one of the applicants here with now. Um, every one of the glorious houses that this board approved and put efforts in is currently in violation. They've all received a letter from the DEC. FEMA has imposed new regulations. We allow, we get building permits to construct, what, half a dozen houses there? They're all in violation. We are coming up with a plan that will conform with the new regs and quite frankly, a two-car garage at 24 feet, I know we're less than 24 feet, and a front entrance, I don't see how anything else can happen. We have no basement. We don't have a crawl space. Most of the other houses do. They, I understand, have to fill in their basements. They'll probably be coming to look for an addition on the side of their houses to store their furnaces and their hot water heaters, washer and dryers, and whatever other implements are in the basement. That's what's different today than what you've seen in the past. I also own a house at 34 Lake Road. Not self-imposed. We tore it down. The new buyer came in and got the standard variance, three and a half feet on each side. This is waterfront development. Same contiguous zoning. Don't tell me one neighborhood's different than another neighborhood when you're in waterfront development in contiguous zoning. You can't say, you can do it, and he can't, because you're on this side of the road, and you're down the road, and you're, you live over here closer to a restaurant. And I don't understand this. The precedent has clearly been set. Check your records, it's three and a half feet. And we're coming in asking for five, not three and a half. But check, check. The precedent is the precedent is three and a half feet. So we're not asking for anything more. We're asking for less. 
and we are needing to conform with the new FEMA rights that have suddenly been dropped on us to say, we have to build a garage. We can't build a separate garage. It just absolutely wouldn't work. Incidentally, just three houses down, and I know we didn't talk about it. Unfortunately, those pages got passed out. It was just a packet I brought of six pages, each a different page, clearly showing three, four houses down from my lot. Yeah, somebody's house burned, and it went down, and they rebuilt. And there's a garage on the lot line. I don't know who has the page. To character the neighborhood? Do you know most of those homes... Other than those that were fortunate enough to be able to get a lot and a half, Tana Webster did sell a lot, the single lot, to, the, to either neighbor. <clears throat> so they no longer had to have a 40-foot lot. They were allowed, they got 60. Another gentleman bought two lots, he has 80. Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility there. You know, I've developed and built the houses at the Bluffs. Not a bad-looking neighborhood. High assessments. Those houses are five feet from the lot lines. Do we all know that? We got we were allowed zoning to build a house five feet from the line and then ten feet on the other line. The difference over there versus where we are, the, the lots were in excess of 100 feet wide. And guess what? It's waterfront property. People aren't buying their property so they can have big side yards. They're building, they're buying their property so they can have a view from inside the house. Outside's nice for three months here in upstate New York. The rest of the time we're in our houses. Isn't that where we want to be reasonable and considerate to anybody that owns and lives in a home? I think, you know, I apologize last time because I didn't provide a plan to Al. I just thought, well, I remember he got three and a half feet, she got three and a half feet, that guy got five feet and then one side on a lot line, they're in, they're in the pictures. I have the data. So if anybody wants to suggest that we've somehow invented a new program, it hasn't happened. And I hope this board is reasonable enough to take what I just said into consideration as you go forward and debate whether five feet on each side is appropriate. Well, the pro part of the problem is, is we asked for the data and we asked for the data to be completed in a package so that the board could review it a week ago, uh, delivered so that uh, a week ago so that the board could review it. That didn't happen. So you're saying that these things are there, but Ms. Vola has put together a package and an Excel spreadsheet that shows what was granted, and that disagrees with what you've just said. Well, maybe Ms. Volo can do a further packet of all the properties that have been built within the last you, year. You were requested to bring this, and you said it would. It is not commensurate on this board to present your case. Okay, I'll tell you what. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Yeah. Let's suffer. Yeah. Thank, thanks. I make a motion to deny without prejudice. In my view, the applicants made absolutely no effort to conform to the requirements of the board and to give the board something that we can hang the standards on and sit, uh, work with the standards. And under the circumstances and given what we've just heard, I don't see any particular, <clears throat> anything in particular that would allow me to think that the applicants were going to move forward in good faith. I don't see a reason to rehear this thing until the applicants have had a lot of time to think about what's going on and come up with a plan that matches what's been done in the rest of this neighborhood. This is exasperating. I don't want to waste any more time on it right now. I'll tell you what. Um, 
to deny without prejudice, second, and vote on that. That Carol, I have to consult with you on this. Mm -hmm. That ends their ability to apply for this variance for a year. Uh, is that well, a, a denial. You say without prejudice, Eric, uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to denying with prejudice. Right. Prejudice with prejudice would would be move them out a year. Move them out a year. Yeah. Well, okay. Is this something? Is, done, is, is this something you've done in the past? Is yes, we we have prejudice? done it. This this basically means that this package is unacceptable to the board and has to. But be they could re uh, they could reapply under the. Well, I, I'm guessing that they, if this is what you've been doing, this right. is a, a denial with pre without prejudice would mean they could reapply for the same relief. But they would have to come back, and I don't know how the board. I don't know what the standard is for the board. They will, they'll have to reapply, and they'll have to show some effort and some data to back up what's being said. So I guess I, I guess I guess the denial is just so I understand. The denial of prejudice is they you're permitting them to come back within a year, basically, right. as opposed to a denial with prejudice, which would be a year. Okay. Right. My, my point of view is I would rather continue the discussion rather than shut the door on it, but I'm one member. Chairman, the only one that would have that further. There's a motion there. Hey, you're right. But so, yeah. so we almost, yeah. we have to vote on it. You have to vote on the motion. Can we say one more thing? Without, uh, you're, you're beyond that. The motion's been made and seconded. We've, we've, the board will act on it first. Yeah. Do, uh, well, but do we need to have a public, or I, public comments or no? Well, not on, not on this motion. Okay. I mean, I, I think that the, the point that for this motion, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's a motion to discuss, right? And that's all. It'd be, it's up to the board now, right? You brought it back to the board. Yeah. I, my opinion is we, we didn't discuss after the fact, but now that a motion's been made, we're pretty much seconded. We have to, we have to follow through with it. Okay, well, uh, well, motion could be re withdrawn. Right, unless it's withdrawn. The motion could be withdrawn. And both, and both the mover and the second motion okay. have to. My, my, this is, this is my experience. When conversations get heated, things are said and things are done sometimes out of emotion instead of reason. <laughs> so, I, I would like this, I would like, I think you understand where the board's coming from, but I, if we if we vote on this, if it's not withdrawn, that shuts the door on your well the application for a motion year is granted. If it's granted, if it's granted, if if it doesn't, if the motion gets voted down, then you're you're free to move forward. But now the motion's been made, you want to stick with your motion? Well, yes. In that case, if if the motion passes because it's without prejudice, then the applicant can turn around and apply right away again. But it sounds like the board would really like to see a complete package and... Right. That's basically what I'm trying to reasons. do at this point, is force a reapplication with all of the understanding that these things will be done. Uh, I, I do not want to table this again because it's just going to come back around full circle and we're going to be sitting here discussing this all over again as to why they want this and they want that, but they won't consider what's been done previously. That's why I want denial without prejudice. Chairman, uh, we've had multiple... Uh, um, zoning requests and variance requests in every lot that was developed and redeveloped along the strip. I mean, they're, they're long, they're narrow, and uh, every applicant has come before the board and said what he wanted and what they, what they needed and what they had to have and they had an original design. And every single request, uh, I think we've asked for uh, concessions, on side setbacks, rear setbacks, height, uh, et cetera. And every applicant up to now has complied with, uh, with some of the concessions that were, this board has asked for. So I understand uh, uh, Mr. Snyder's uh, uh, exasperation, 
but uh, coming before the board after something is tabled and not having significant changes to the design or the variance requests, I think is unacceptable. So you second? Both I second. second. You second. Call vote. Mr. Snyder? Aye. Mr. Denota? Aye. Mrs. Bolo? Aye. Mr. Hauser? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Alright, so you have a right to reapply this, you know, your application as, as presented was denied. Um, but you have a right to reapply with modification. Might I suggest if you come back, help show show the height, the floors, and the reason the building has to be that tall, and so on and so forth. Right? It's going to 
it'll, it'll be it'll be four weeks if they have to reapply them. Four weeks by the time they advertise and everything. And, and could they reapply reapply within that same period? I, I didn't have a big too late. Well, it's 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 unfortunately it's too late because a motion's been made and passed. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. 
One shows the shed where it is now, and one shows the shed with the uh, with the variants. Uh, we, we were trying to do the best that we could to center it on the lot. Um, we won't, didn't really want it too close to the house, uh, just to allow space between the house and the pool. Is that, is that pool to scale? Is it yeah. To scale? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the, the scale is uh, an inch is 30 feet. So you're about 16 or 17 feet from the house? Uh, yes. Which is not, it has to be a minimum of 10. Right. It has to be a minimum of 10 from the house. So. <coughs> okay, so that's not unreasonable. a good suggestion that he has this drawn up so we can see exactly where that how the shed impacts that that pool yeah because you really can't get it a whole lot closer to the house there's the rules are yeah just well you're doing the same thing i did you, you took a paper and scaled it off <laughs> yeah it's about, about the scale isn't minutes. in this briefcase yeah. or backpack or whatever okay. it is and even after you move the pool back, you're only about 10 feet from the shed. If, if, after you move the shed, after you move, if you move the shed. Yeah, what I, what I came up with from, if you go from corner to corner, it's roughly 12 feet. Okay. Yeah, fairly, I'd say 10, okay. but. Well, you know, as I stated the last meeting, it's a small lot. It's only 80 feet wide, only 156 feet deep. Um, you know, so the backyard is not a not a large backyard, and um, yeah, your pool's pretty much going to line up with your neighbor's pool. It looks like yeah, it, it'll be real close. Yeah, yeah. Shed meets the standards for height, right? Uh, I'm assuming. Um, I well, you're well below it, I guess. It's just a standard shed. Yeah, it's not. It's not terribly tall. It's I don't know, probably yeah. ten feet tall of the height. Uh, Bob, just for your information, the last meeting they were asking for this variance, but they didn't have the pool drawn on the map. So the board requested that they actually draw the pool on the map so we could see how it impacts the shed location. Yeah. So that's that's what we have now. My my only question, and I, and I wasn't here for the last meeting, so my apologies. Um, do you need the variance on the on the rear and the side? Because you just push. Could you maintain the side and just push the shed back by feet? Um, I mean, ideally, uh, it, it, to to make it centered uh, on the lines, it would be, uh, you know, and, and it gets it further away from from the pool that way. Um, you know, if it if it wasn't five to the um, to the east side, uh, it also begins to interfere. But there's a couple of very tall spruce trees that it starts to put into. Um, uh, and then above and beyond that, it's really that corner of the lot, um, it's, it's blocked from view from most of the neighbors. Um, uh, it, on the east side, there's a hedgerow. Uh, and like I said, on the south, there's two large spruce trees. Uh, so it really doesn't, it doesn't inter interfere with sight lines uh, on the back side very much if we went five and five. Um, do you envision any other structure for the storage of pool chemicals or anything? Are you going to use the shed for that? or I would either use the garage or the shed, yeah. What do you think, Don? Well, I'm certainly happy uh, we have a map. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. another comment, and I, I, I want to bring this up again, because Bob was here. When I visited the site, the backyard that adjoins them, that, that's a huge backyard. That house is way away from that corner. I'll, I'll bet that, that house is back at least 100 feet. It's just a, they're on a curve, so it's a real deep lot that backs up to them. Well, I hesitate to use that to, to say that we can impose more on that lot, but under the circumstances with the location of the pool. Um, What's well, a proposed pool? 
Yeah, proposed pool. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah. Although I haven't had yeah. yeah. any yeah. variances with Grant that the pool is constructed within a period of one year. Yeah. We're, we're assuming the pool is going to be built. <laughs> well, otherwise, it doesn't, I mean, the, the request for the variance doesn't have a leg of stand. Mr. Positive, can I, do you mind if I respond? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. I'll put the deposit down on the pool, actually. Uh, and so you don't have any problems with us conditioning that the pool is constructed within a period of one year? Um, no, I mean, we're, we're okay. supposed to construct in the spring. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. That's, that's actually a good thought, yeah. Well, the okay. whole variance is based yeah, on... Yeah, the pool is the reason for the variance, yeah. absolutely, so it should be part of the motion. Okay, Quinn, do you have any thoughts? This, I mean, this helps, um, because I, I, I could not visualize, I just could not visualize the size of the pool, because, again, I keep forgetting to put a scale in my folder as well. Um, so this, this definitely helps, and, and that was the one question I had, is obviously the five feet to the rear um, has no line of sight impact to any of the neighbors, and I was just wondering if, um, if maybe we could reduce the side, the impact of the side to maybe 10 feet instead of five. Um, but I did note also the location of both the trees on your property and then the hedgerow that's on your neighbor's property as well that, um, that shields it quite a bit. There's a lot of privacy to the... Um it would be to the east. They got a hedge of really thick pines there, or arborvitaes, or something like that. It's, there's, there's quite a lot of privacy there. All right. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, this open. This is open to the public. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this application, call us at eight seven two seven zero one one. And while we're waiting for the phone to ring. Um, Let's see, pursuant to section 617.5 of the environmental court, I'll make it a motion for a type 2 seeker. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We didn't have any calls last week when uh, when these folks were, not, not last week, the last meeting when they were here, so I don't expect we're going to get any. Well, let me right just run through the standards and give people a few minutes anyways. Okay. Request is not out of character with the neighborhood. Um, it's close but it's not too far wrong um, so I'll give them that one no detriment to nearby properties I think we've discussed at length the fact that the, we've got a deep lot and a lot of shielding and in fact uh, trees would have to be removed if the shed were moved to the um, uh, southwest corner uh, which would be a detriment to the neighborhood <laughs> Benefits not achievable by any other method, as the chairman pointed out, this lot is only 80 feet wide and 156 feet deep, so there's not a lot of real estate to play with there, especially with the deposit on the pool. Um, request is not substantial. Well, yeah, it sort of is, but that's one out of seven standards. No adverse physical or environmental impacts. Um, difficulty is not self-created. You know, I could go either way on that, but it's not an undesirable change. So under the circumstances, I would make a motion to grant this one. Well, what we'll do, let me, let me just close the public, no call, so we'll close the public portion of the meeting. And um, uh, Eric, you're about to make a motion. Sure. <coughs> I'll make a motion to allow a shed located at 933 Dibbles Trail. Applicants uh, Constance and Nick Kingsley requesting variance of five foot side setback and five foot rear setback where 15 feet is required. Um, associated with moving an existing utility shed on a 290 hundreds acre parcel having SBL 094.06-2-22 located in an MHR medium high residential district under section 225-48 of the code of the town of Webster. Now, should, can we condition that on the 
installation of the pool? Yes. Um, the condition to the variance being that the shed is moved and the pool is built within one year Absolutely. of this evening. Second. Second. Okay, Mr. Snyder? Aye. Mr. Donato? Aye. Mr. Hausa? Aye. Mrs. Bolo? Aye. Mr. Barone? Aye. Do you have your variance? It's only got, you got to, you have to get a permit, obviously, to move it. And then, um, you have one, one year of meaningful construction. If it doesn't happen within a year, you have to come back to the board and, you know, reapply for the variance. Okay. So good luck with your project. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Very much. Thank you. Thanks for putting that together. Thank you. I'll check your hands, but, yeah. yeah. Scheduled matters. Those three items were all tabled from last meeting. So, uh, Trent, could you read in the first Five, scheduled matter? 535 Forest Lawn Road Porch, located at 535 Forest Lawn Road. Applicant Kimberly Frisbee is requesting area variances to allow a 28 foot front setback where 75 feet is required and a 13 foot side setback where 20 feet is required associated with the reconstruction and expansion of an existing front porch on a 0.62 acre parcel having SBL number 048.19-1-73 located in an R1 single family residential district under section 225-9B of the code of the town of Webster. Good evening and uh, if you could state your name for the record please and tell us about your project. Hi, my name is Kim Frisbee, and I'm the homeowner at 535 Forest Lawn Road. Um, and my um, my application is for a variance to the setback requirement for um, my existing and non-conforming property. Um, I am replacing an existing porch that's 34 foot by 8 foot wide. Um, I'd like to extend the decking an additional three feet. Um, but leave the roof that covers the porch in place. Mm -hmm. So everything below the roof line would be replaced. Now, one of the variances is for the side setback, and the house is already 11.4 from the side. So we're just That's basically making that legal through the variance. So we're looking primarily the front setback, in my, my, uh, my view. Now, um, it's stated you're not going to put a roof over that? Don't you, don't you want there's a roof a, over that? A, there is a roof over the existing uh, porch today. Um, I'd like to leave that in place, um, replace the header um, that supports that roof and the columns that are in place today, and just extend the decking another three feet so that there's more room for usable oh, space. Okay. That's it. That's a, I love that neighborhood. <laughs> it's got a real quaint feeling to it. Uh, the homes are, you know, all quite old, and uh, it's got that, it's almost like that summer vacation feeling to it, you know, because it's proximity to the water. And all those homes have varying setbacks. You could see the neighbor's house to the east. I think it's probably two feet off the line. Um, there's garages across the street that are two and three and four feet off off the property lines. 28 feet is generous compared to some of the other setbacks in that neighborhood. Uh, actually, the house to the west is really close to the road. That's, right. I think it's, I'm guessing, 15 feet off the road or something like that. Yeah, yeah and, and as the boards discussed previously, the width of the proposed porch along with its addition isn't all that significant. Um, you can see where you might want it even deeper still, mm -hmm. but this gives you enough room to get across around some porch furniture and everything, and since the view of the lake is out the front of the house, That's it uh, makes a lot of sense to locate the porch there. Also, mm -hmm. the 
line of the roof isn't going to be extended and the house to the east in fact doesn't have any windows that will you know this won't be obstructing a view any further than is already there um, the house is also quite a bit above road grade so it's not going to impose on the road either I I don't know how the rest of the board feels about this, but I wouldn't exclude the potential of extending that roof out because I think on rainy days she's going to wish there was a roof over there extra three feet. On some porches and decks, we ask the applicant, are you going to extend it? And, and, and you know, but I, I, the, the board, you know, I'm, I'm one voice on the board. I, I wouldn't exclude that on this particular application. Well, I, I wouldn't propose a condition saying that it couldn't be which right. we have in some sometimes we do condition that you can't put a roof over it but right yeah uh, I, wouldn't I, wouldn't do, would. I wouldn't do that in this case because two or four years from now you might want to bring the columns out and put the railing out right out in front yes so. absolutely put the porch back or the porch back up on the second floor too it used to be a two-story porch do, do we do we have any letters of, of support? Yes, yes, we do. We do. I did remember one letter of support from the neighbor. Uh, 535. Uh, oh, no, not 535. That's this one. I forgot the number. 530. Yes. He was uh, in strong support of the port, so it's badly needed repair. It would be aesthetically pleasing, and uh, it would uh, upgrade the neighborhood. So you have a fan there across the street. Um, I, I, I have to agree with them. I have to agree with them. This meeting is open to the public. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this application, you can call us at 872-7011. And while we're waiting, I'll uh, do seeker here. Pursuant to section 617.5 of the environmental code, I'll make a motion for a type 2 seeker. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any other thoughts? Uh, to me, it's, it, it looks pretty um, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if, if you look at the aerial view of all of the properties on that side of the road, even though the road angles um, to the southwest, the houses are all in line, and this really doesn't appear that it would bring the front of the house out any further than the immediate neighbor to the east who also has a porch and their garage also butts out to the front of the house. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's going to call in, so I'll close the public portion of the meeting. Uh, Karen, you want to, would you care to go through the uh, standards? I can do that. The request is not out of the character of the neighborhood. Um, many of the houses along that stretch have front porches. Um, and as the houses are older, they, they are in need of upgrading over time, and, and this one is just due to, to be improved upon. Um, extending the size is um, certainly not substantial because it, it's, it's a fairly, I'll call it a fairly narrow porch at this point in time, and the extra couple of feet, the extra three feet addition just gives room for furniture and um, navigation around the furniture so you don't fall off the porch when you walk past the chair. Um, there is not a detriment created to nearby properties. Um, the closest house to the east does not have windows on that side where they will actually see the porch encroaching any further to the road. Um, and, and it's a minimal encroachment in, in any event. Um, so it is not substantial um, as it's just a porch, the, the footing of the porch, although um, we've discussed not <coughs> restricting extension of the roof at some point in time. The difficulty is not self-created and that front porches have to go on the front porch. Um, the porch is already in existence and it does need to be maintained a little bit. So um, I don't even know why I was going with that. Um, not self-created and porches have to be on the front of the house and this one's already there and it's just upgrading it and, and making it pretty again. Certainly not an undesirable change. Um, the plans that the applicant has shown well, it'll be a lovely addition to the front of the house. Um, as Barry indicated, that neighborhood is just, it, it takes you back in time when you drive down that road. It's just cozy and, and just reminds you of just a quiet summer. And, and this will certainly, um, it'll be an improvement to your home and, and it will certainly be an upgrade to the neighborhood as well. 
anything else anyone would like to add? Sounds like you covered everything. All right. If we're not getting any more public comments, I can make a motion. Let me find my yellow sheet. I would make a motion to grant an area variance at 535 Forest Lawn for a front porch to allow a 28-foot front setback where 75 feet is required and a 13-foot side setback where 20 feet is required associated with the reconstruction and expansion of an existing front porch and a 0.62-acre parcel having SPL number 048.19-1-73 and located in an R1 single-family residential district under Section 225-9 of the town, Code of the Town of Webster. I'll second that. Mrs. Volo? Aye. Mr. Barone? Aye. Mr. Denoto? Aye. Mr. Schneider? Aye. Mr. Hauser? Aye. Okay. Have your bed. And uh, you, two conditions. You need a building permit. And uh, you have one year meaningful construction. I'm sure you can do it sooner than that. But yes. The, the variance, if you don't start within a year, you have to come back and reapply for the variance. So start it within a year, right? Okay. Sounds good. Have yeah, a good night. Thank, Thank you. you so much. is requesting area variances to allow a five-foot east side <coughs> setback where 15 feet is required and a six-foot west side setback where 15 feet is required associated with the reconstruction of a single-family dwelling on a 0.21-acre parcel having SPL number 063.06-1-9.1 located in a WD Waterfront Development District under Section 225-10 and Section 225-22 of the Code of the Town of Webster. You still have to identify yourself for the record. because of FEMA floodplains and and that sort of thing. So we're, we're kind of now in another direction, north-south rather than east-west. And um, so with that, I would, um, I'm sure you have the packet. The new map. It's going to be built out of the ground, so that's the garage, and then two floors above it. But this meets height requirements. There's this no will meet the height requirements, right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because we don't need the, 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 the trust lands in this one because we've got room for supporting structures, so it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Just some interior walls. Just know. interior walls, yeah. So this is a little easier to work with. I got it to a kind of garage. Mr. LaRue, did you indicate that you provided architecturals on this? Yeah. They were emailed to us today. <laughs> That's why. Thank you. So it's in our tablet, but we don't have copies. I... We've got copies you can, I can pass around if you wish. It, it just, I, I don't mean to keep nagging on it, but it would be so helpful to the board if we could get this material in advance so that we can actually look at it not on a 6 by 8 screen. Because my eyes are not, they're not what they used to be. Bear with us while we're going through the material that we just received. Oh, well, wait, are the plans on here? No, they're not. No, just the blueprint. Okay, they were they were emailed to us today, but we did not get hard copies today. I have it on my phone. I my phone's too old to this pull it up. Smaller. You've got the same phone, Karen. Yes. We're, we're actually we're trying to study the plan a little bit because we didn't, didn't have a chance a, to see I've it. got a full set of plans, but I'm sorry. <sighs> okay. You have the plans on your tablet? Dad. No. Oh. No, they're on my computer. That's why I can't find it. I don't. No, they're not there. Yeah. I thought I was looking the, the house plans are not. Oh, that's, that's not there. Actually. I, oh, yeah, that. I have but that's not the revised oh. plot plan, but not the architectural drawings. Right. Well, it's a, I, no, it's it's a computer. I did see it, but I didn't. Yeah. I didn't make copies of it, so maybe I'm just missing it. Actually, I think we got we got that email today, right? Yes. Yeah. I just figured we have a copy here. Bathroom on the first floor, open kitchen to a dining area, elevator and stairs. The, the, the reason... Yesterday. Yeah, the reason we, we've run these... Not side yeah. setback variants no. a lot. And the reason we like the floor plan is because in a couple of occasions the town is able to modify it a little bit mm -hmm. to give us a little bit more room on the side setback. But I don't see the I don't I personally I don't see the plan on my on my well there's two bedrooms and an office on the second floor. One bedroom's 11 foot one by 11 foot two. The second is 13 one by 12 seven. Mm -hmm. um, some closets. The office is 12 11 by eight feet. Uh, single bath, no bath off the master. Where's the garage? Where's the garage? The garage is underneath it's everything. Underneath the whole structure. Okay. Laundry's on the second floor, but it's not what you'd call big. Living room, dining room is 24-7 by 15. Mm -hmm. There's a there's bath with a shower, a mechanical room off of the living room. <coughs> and then you've got a kitchen and a pantry area. Now there's, there's a, the pinch point, my, in my view, is that 6.64, because that other house is right up against the property line. What's that little two-foot jog there? I, I, I don't have the plan. That's the elevator. Um, howdy, my name's uh, Jim Orfus. Uh, this, the 370 was my mother-in-law, Betty Perkins, place, and uh, that's something that really... Um, my wife loves the water. She was a diver. Her mom was an uh, Olympic diving coach. But this first floor, or whatever we call it, the, that's basically built on stilts. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, we went through the DEC, and the DEC gave us the building permit.
to go ahead. We got until 2022, I guess. But, um, yeah, and I need an elevator because I've been, <laughs> for me, I've been carried down my steps a number of times. From it, uh, I've had six back surgeries, and my back every once in a while gives out. So that, I don't know if the elevator was an issue, but that was important. My kids wouldn't let us build unless we put an elevator in. The house is, it's small, really, compared to a uh, small footprint, but it's a beautiful spot. The best part of it is evenings, looking out at the lake. <laughs> you know, just the sunsets are the best part of the, the property there. Um, but we can't live in it the way it is, make it a permanent anyways, but uh, permanently. But um, that's why we decided to, to go, you know, to go up and keep the same footprint. The only thing different, we're putting a balcony in the front, you know, out of, off the main floor. Yeah, we really haven't, we really haven't been flooded. The basement is basically all um, water table goes up. We have, a, we have a basement there. We plan to knock it, knock it down and, and fill it in. We're going to take, because we own a, the berm. Or your know, project line, we're going to take the fill from that and use that to fill in the basement. And we're looking at also to um, tie in to the road. We're working on trying to get a permit from the, what was it, the county? Yeah. The county, yeah. So we're going to cut a hole 20, 25 feet wide out of the 50 foot to the road. Because we need to do that first um, so we don't disturb anybody else's property so we could bring in the the loaders or whatever we need to knock down the house and the stone and whatever uh, filler and the lumber and things because we don't want to go through the, get really nice neighbors but I prefer not to you know try to keep I don't want to do any damage to their property at this point. Well they did that on one property a little further down from you. Yeah not filler, right but he it. cut his open I think. Yeah. When he did his. Yeah. Um, but no this is a this is a dream house for us and uh, We'd love to be it. We'd love to be in Webster, you know, in Penfield now. Just move over to the next town. So, mm -hmm. any questions I can answer? Um, I don't know. If, you know. If you could just restate your seeing within the con confines of the existing footprint that's there now. Yes, except for the elevator. Except for the elevator. Except for the same footprint. We're not going any bigger. And that's basically. Uh, we're going up, but not. But you're staying in the footprint. Yeah, standard footprint, except where the elevator and the stairs are to get to the house. You know, to get up into the house. Okay. I don't know how. I don't know what the distance is, but okay, no. from the existing house over. Um, okay, so. No, from the elevator. I'm looking at for the architecture it doesn't they don't have any dimensions on them for height. I don't know if that's the height of the place. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's on here. No, it's not on here, but it looks like the roof line is lower and the we're not going with big lambs uh, in between the floors so we can maintain a, a more normal ceiling height on this and that'll drop the roof. The roof isn't as steep as the other plan, mm -hmm. so we can stick within that. Uh, I don't know. There's got to be height. No, I know it. They didn't see one. They didn't put one on there. Okay. No. All right. So it's a quarter inch per. Right. <coughs> They're shrunken down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are, 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 are you ready? Is it 9.5 feet to the west? Is that? That where is going to be additional space, or? I can't hear you. So nine, are you adding about nine and a half feet to the west? Nine and a half feet to the west. Yeah, for the entry and the elevator, okay. that's true. For the entry door and the elevator. This meeting is open to the public. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this project can call us at 872-7011. Um, the scales on the drawings are the same, and if I look at the uh, width of the house, or the depth of the house, I guess I should say to the north, 24-4, and when I take a look at that compared to the ground level, the house
forces well believe that even to the peak. The new house will be a little bit smaller in our south than the existing home. Then we have the porch, which makes up uh, mm -hmm. the other uh, 16. <coughs> Excuse me. Any concern with the setback to the west? That's, that's the one concern I have um, because the that's house. The, that's the only concern I have. Yeah, yeah. That, the house at 366 is right up on top of the lot line. Um, and with, with the footprint of the house as it exists right now, you still have a significant distance between those houses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the setbacks to this house are pretty much what we'd like to be dealing with, plus the fact that the house, the other house is so hard up on the lot line, really, we can't impose on this lot simply because that other house is built where it is. It's not their, it's not in their domain to, to repair that issue. Now, what have I got for a lot area? Yeah, we definitely want to keep five feet from the other. I mean, if you have less than five feet, you need to be a retard, for a retardant wall. Oh, that probably so, wouldn't so, be a yeah. bad idea well, anyways, yeah. but yeah. But, um, yeah, to move it a fraction, a tenth or two of a foot really doesn't make any sense there. And given the wind that you get down there. Yeah. I don't think the phone's going to ring, so we'll close the public portion of the meeting. Uh, Pursuant to section 617.5 of the Barmella Court, I'll make a motion for a type 2 seeker. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Bring it back to the board. I guess I, I don't have the benefit of the plan in front of me. I wish I got home from work, take supper, and come to the meeting. So I didn't really have time to review anything. So that's the, <laughs> that's, that's the disadvantage of not having things, you know, days ahead of time. But, um, Without looking at it, I can't tell if anything could be reconfigured. I, you know, you folks have you have a copy of the plan? Yeah, I do. And and the bedrooms are not substantial, no, I, I, and you've only got a single bathroom on the second oh, floor with a laundry. I, I oh no, it's a, it's a modest plan. I was just I just wanted to see if we could get a more setback on the west side. Maybe we can't. Maybe we can't. Yeah, I'm. It's going to be tight. How, how wide are the garage, the garage base? Because that's, I, I understand the addition for the elevator and, and the side entry stairwell, um, or the side entry in the, in the stairwell, um, but my eyes aren't good enough to determine the width of the, the two bay garage area and if we could just, the, Pull the in a width bit. of the bay, each bay is 12 foot. Is it? Okay. And then you've got space because of the pilings that are in there that um, are adding to that width. So the whole kitten caboodle is about it's 28. It's 28. Yeah, so it's okay. not oversized by any means. No, it's, it's well, not it's, ginormous. It's just that... It's big. You've just got those pilings in there too that you've got to work around. Yeah, I just I struggle with the the six point six feet to the west just because of the proximity of of the other home there. What it, what it does is it transmits right straight up the initial the original twenty eight feet comes right straight out into the living space, and then you have the right. elevator. You know, an elevator has to be outside the living space to reach the second yeah. floor and not go right through the middle of the house. There isn't enough room. We looked at trying to put it, you know, inside. Yep. But it would take off would take <coughs> so much more room in this. Yeah. No, I, I, I see that. Because I guess, what is it, just about 800 square foot. And that's the whole
there's really a lack of dimensions. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, we, we looked at doing that, but it was a, we couldn't come up with a good drawing to give us the, some room up there. Uh, it would cut out part of part of our house, which it isn't that big, you know. Yeah, the living space, the garages might seem substantial, but that's only supporting the living space above, which that is, is not. Uh, it's, it's 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 not that big. Thirteen hundred square feet. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, the whole house only twenty four by thirty five. Well, and if I look at the. Buildable, I and mean, that's why I'm trying to do the math, but I'm not seeing the dimensions on here. Um, but just the the lot from Lake Road to Lake Ontario yeah. is 170 feet, but I really only have half of that that's that's usable lot, except even less than half of that because of having to keep it off of the water based on your DEC regulations and keeping it out of the. Yeah, the one thing we area. could do <clears throat> is we've got 5.86 feet on the east side, and we could take three quarters of a foot, move the house three quarters of a foot in that direction, and make it 5.16, add to the to the west side three quarters of a foot, making that seven and a half in that range. Well, that's what I was kind of alluding to earlier. You know, yeah. be, it can't be less than five. Yeah, something but, like seven and a half, even like, and that because they're almost at the property line on that side. Yeah, yeah, there's the there's house house right there the is. Garage, yeah. um, if that helps. Well, that that brings us into what we were talking about in a previous application, but at the same time, personally, I don't see imposing on this property because the other property is nowhere close to compliance. I don't, I don't see where we can uh, establish some precedent that says these folks have to do something <coughs> to mitigate the impact of something that a neighbor did. I don't think we even have the legal ability to do <coughs> something like that. It would get thrown out of court on an appeal. Um, but on the other hand, if, if you can shift that since you are going basically back to bare earth and starting over again, that might be to your benefit as well, simply to to have that extra space over there. I mean, I wouldn't impose it on you, but if that's what you want well, to do. It's not going to be any difference because this firm here is going to lay it out, and all we have to do is move it just a little bit. Right. Um, you tell well, well, I, guess, I don't know. I don't know all the legal aspects of it. Um, but, you know, if we get, if we get to move it, we'll move it. Um, we If we could move over, it would uh, wouldn't make any difference at all. It would clear us up on the other side. And like been laying it out. I mean, we haven't got to that point yet. Then we wind up with seven feet on the other side, yeah. which yeah. is yeah, fine. That's that works. That's easy enough to do, I guess. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It's a uh, it's an unusual neighborhood. As you just just looking at this map, you can see the house next door is on the lot line and so on. And it's you know it's based there were, when they were built there were they were cot they were cottages. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and it's not it's not a it's not a huge house you're trying to fit into the space. It's a very modest house. It's just like you said you want you want to you. You want to, you just want to enjoy you want to enjoy the lake view and so on and so forth. I said the house is not oversized. No. It's just just what you need. Just what you need. It's not oversized at all. Yeah. Yeah, we just want to build Well, I'll I'll run through the standards. Anybody have any, <coughs> any compelling thoughts that you want to put forth before I read through the standards? Okay. So the request is not out of character with the neighborhood. On this map, the setbacks on all those houses are tight. Side to side, front to back, every one of them, they're all tight. Um, there won't be any detriment created to the neighborhood and nearby properties. Actually, it'll, they're going to build a brand new home pretty much on the footprint of the old house. It'll be an improvement to the neighborhood. OK? 
Okay. Um, the benefit really is not achievable by any other method. The house, uh, the size of the house is, uh, is fairly modest. Um, they can't really make it any smaller and get the elevator. I kind of like the elevator idea because uh, we're an aging demographic and elevators are going to become more, more and more popular and necessary. Um, it's not really achievable by any other method. There's no room to move the house forward or backward or side to side. It's just a tight fit. The request really isn't substantial considering um, you know, the existing residents and the setbacks on the existing residents. Uh, there's no negative physical and environmental impacts to the site or the neighborhood. Actually, it's an improvement because the house is going to be built up out of the floodplain where the existing house is built. We didn't get any negative call-ins for, uh, you know, any, any neg negative from the neighbors. No comments in that, in that respect. The difficulties not really self-created. They, uh, they have just so much room to work with, and they're trying to work within that space. They've done a pretty good job of that. It's not an undesirable change. And uh, looking at the other homes in the neighborhood, with respect to the other homes, the request is not significant. So anybody want to add anything? So we're having a seven-foot side setback to the west? We'll go with seven. And then whatever is left over, it'll be 5.1 or something, 5.2 or something like five. that, whatever. Okay. Get a good surveyor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I, hear much what you're saying. I, we said get a good survey. <laughs> get a good survey. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm kidding with you, of course. Because that's, that's Al's business, right? So with, with that, I, I'd like to make a motion <coughs> to uh, grant an area, area variances to allow a five-foot east side setback where 15 feet is required. And we'll go with a seven-foot, not six, but seven-foot west side setback where 15 feet is required associated with the reconstruction of a single family dwelling on a 0.21 acre parcel we'll having SBL number 063.06-1-9.1 located in a WD waterfront development district under section 225-10 and section 225-22 of the code of the town of Webster. Second. Mr. Barone. Aye. Mr. Snyder. Aye. Mr. Donato? Aye. Mrs. Volo? Aye. Mr. Haza? Aye. Okay, you have your variance. The only thing you can use now is we're trying to, we want to keep seven feet on, on the west side and whatever's left on the east side. So, yeah, your, your engineer will make a note of that and make sure that happens. So, yeah, one, one year for meaningful construction. Good, good luck. Good luck with your project. Al, do you have all your permits from the DEC? Yeah, we're just waiting to hear back from the contractor about tearing it down. Now we could go ahead. It's okay to do that portion of the demolition? Yeah, you can go to the building department now and get your permit to build a new home. Yeah. Okay. okay. Al, Thank you. did you receive any permits from the DEC on this? We have a You do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Provide, provide a copy of the order. Yeah, I, get, I have a copy of the home. And I, I, I know I sent it to... Uh, um, Mike at the office, but I do have your permit. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the last item on the agenda is Webster Woods Car Wash. Webster Woods Car Wash, located at 801 Ridge Road, applicant Webster Woods Plaza LLC, is requesting an area variance to allow a 67-foot rear setback, where 75 feet is required, associated with the construction of a four-bay car wash on a 2.37-acre parcel having SBL number 079.17-1-85 located in an MC Medium Intensity Commercial District under Section 225-17B of the Code of the Town of Webster. Good evening. Could you state your name and uh, tell us about your project, please? Good evening. I'm Chris Nadler from Mark 4. Some of you may remember me from about a month and a half ago when I stood here and said, don't worry, there's no area variances. I remember that. Yeah. 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 Exactly what you said. But the same plan looks the same. I stand before you hat in hand here, I screwed up. Um, I talked to our engineers, 
initially when we first presented this project three years ago when the building was flipped around and was told no, no variances, because that's the instruction we gave BME. We want a building with no variances, and they built that, or they designed that. And then we spent two years in front of the planning board, and we gradually just flipped that building 180 degrees about, which means that we needed a variance. The confusion came in, there's a rear buffer variance existing on the property. I made a mistake and told you there were no area variances. Uh, for that, I truly apologize. It was a mistake. It was my mistake, and uh, I hope you don't hold that against our application. Um, I think I think it doesn't change the character of the application. I think you already determined that uh, this is in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. There's no adverse impacts, and I, I think that uh, uh, you'll see, based on our application, that that, that absolutely remains true. Um, with me here today are Mike Bogajewski from uh, BME Associates and Brian Powers, uh, Director of Engineering at Mark IV. I'll turn it over to them to explain the technical aspects here. Okay. Evening. My name is Mike Brojewski with BME Associates. Um, like Mr. Nadler had mentioned, we're here requesting uh, rear setback variance for the proposed car wash building. Um, the variance we're requesting is 67 feet from that rear lot line where 75 feet is required per the town code. Um, I know you guys are all familiar with the project. Um, the, the proposed car wash um, received the use variance like Mr. Nadler had mentioned. Um, and prior to that, we have been going through the planning board uh, review process and have ended up at the, the layout that we currently have. Um, by moving the building around, moving job aisles around, moving parking around, and um, that now requires the, the rear setback variance. The, the variance itself is to an internal lot line within the plaza. The plaza itself has received um, uh, various additional, like additional variances for all of the lots, including lot one, lot two, lot three, and lot four. The proposed car wash is on lot four of the overall plaza. Um, and the variance itself is consistent with other variances that have been granted throughout the plaza. We did come back, um, we were in front of this board, I'm gonna say a year and a half ago, to seeking additional variances on some of the other lots on the other side of the plaza. And that included some additional rear yard variances that were necessary um, based, on, based on the buildings on lot one, in lot three, um, and like Mr. Nader had mentioned, this lot four did receive a zero foot and a nine foot side, a zero foot rear buffer variance back in 2006, but um, we couldn't find anywhere that a rear setback variance had been granted for the original site plan. Um, back in 2006. Obviously, the car wash is much different than that original site plan and what was it originally intended. The, um, like I mentioned, the setback itself is internal to the plaza. Um, it's not a rear setback uh, backing up to adjacent properties. It's backing up to the existing plaza building itself. Um, That is the existing existing plaza building, and the variance we're seeking is along that common lot line that runs between the proposed car wash building and the existing plaza building. <coughs> so the 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 setback itself, um, 
Granted, it doesn't meet code and requires a variance, but is still consistent with other rear setbacks internal to the overall plaza itself. Do you know um, the, front, the front of the building right on the front setback now? You can't move it forward? It's not on the front setback, but we can't move it forward because of existing, there's an existing stormwater management pond that was built along the, the basically the front corner of that lot. So we have it pushed as far north as possible, basically. Yep, there, yep, and like Brian mentioned, there's an existing stormwater easement that um, is greater than the front front setback distance. Okay, stormwater easement to the town of Webster. Yep, exactly. Oh, I see. Good evening, Brian Powers, on behalf of Westford Woods LLC. Just uh, one more point to make is Mike was referring to the 2006 uh, plan for this plaza. And this box right here is a 14,000 square foot retail building, which is in the same location as the car wash building. Based on the size of that building and where the building is situated, that building was much closer to this rear property line. And that's where the zero buffer uh, distance came from was this uh, particular plan and for some reason we cannot find uh, we've asked uh, staff and, and others if there was a zero buffer yard variance why isn't there a rear setback variance that was also granted because this building obviously needed that rear setback variance much greater than what we're asking for tonight so how many lots are in there? In other words, if this was all one tax account number, you wouldn't be here. Correct. Right. Yeah. Because, we as have, you said, it's an internal we have variance, four, so yes. you're only impacting your own building. Correct. We have four lots, and if you look at our application, I believe the application is Webster Woods Plaza 4 LLC. There are four LLCs uh, that are on this property that own various components of the plaza. And because of financing these days, um, it's very difficult to undo the mortgages for certain lots or certain properties uh, where various entities sit on this property. If we had our choice, we would get rid of that property line. Yeah. But we cannot do that. Now, why can't you ship everything to the north? Because the stormwater pond that's along Ridge Road, there's a stormwater easement that encompasses that pond. Right. And actually the corner, the front, the northwest corner of the car wash sits virtually up against that easement as we're designed right now. I'm looking at the... Uh Give us a minute while we start this map a little bit better. Page, number four of the page. So, so you, the existing gravel is encroaching in that area, as shown on your uh, page number five? The... <coughs> yes. But we are also encroaching that easement with the dry bile that's been requested that goes around the north side of this uh, building. It's not a, not a structure, it's just a paved uh, surface, which I believe is allowable within the easement right. area. Personally, I'd rather see the car wash further from Ridge Road and closer to their own building than the other way around. For aesthetics. No, I'm just trying to avoid. Yeah, no, I'm trying to do away with do away with the variance if yeah. I can. Yeah. No, I, I follow. I'm not disputing that. I just. Yeah, we would love to have this thing right out on Ridge Road if we could, but because of other factors, other uh, infrastructure that's in place already, we don't have that luxury. Is this the last variance you're going to need? 
This I will promise you, and I would have this <laughs> promise you. This is the last variance that we that we need on this lot. <laughs> Until they get the sign off. We were here. Oh, was done. Yeah, Mike said we were here um, about a year ago, and TC Hooligans wanted to build a patio off the side of their. Actually, they wanted to enclose the patio, and that forced us into an easement. And our friend COVID uh, struck, and they uh, are suffering like everybody else is in the business world, and they don't want to make that expense at this point. the hooligans and that was an internal variance as well because yes. it was part of that you know part of the plaza yeah yeah this up uh, as part of that hooligans um variance lot one ended up needing a rear yard variance too because that lot line was adjusted to accommodate the, the building enclosure expansion so that lot one ended up also needing a rear setback variance just because the long line shifted slightly and um, granted it wasn't 75 feet to begin with but then it was decreased on top of that also so it's it's pretty consistent with with the plaza overall and the this uh this meeting is open to the public anyone wishing to speak for or against this application call us at 872-7011 <coughs> I see why they're doing what they're doing. Um, to Don's point, it would be nice to move it forward just to just to minimize the variance. But from an aesthetics point of view, I like the separation of Ridge Road. I, I like I like to see some green space in front of that building. So, and the variance only impacts their own plaza. It's the distance between their car wash and the first retail building within the plaza. So the only one, the only neighbor is themselves. It's kind of an interesting, mm -hmm. interesting way of looking at it. But and later. Yeah. yeah, the other thing is uh, when we start moving and jacking that building around, one of the things that influenced my decision when we did the use variances, they got a lot of people <clears throat> stacking cars right now. If you start moving that building forward or backward, you might you might affect the number of cars you could stack up as well. So, yeah, planning did spend a lot of time on that. Yeah. So, I know uh, before we granted the use variance, I know we asked a lot of questions in regards to the design, configuration, the layout, um, and I and and it, I, if I remember correctly, the vote wasn't unanimous for the use variance. It was not. Oh, so, um, I think part of the the selling point was it that uh, that they didn't need any additional variances to construct what they were proposing, um, and there we are. So. I um, I understand what you're what you're saying because I'm the one that asked I'm the one that asked the question. Are you need more of our answers? Yeah, I I, I remember <laughs> what. Now, um, if that easement wasn't in the front, they wouldn't need they wouldn't need the variance. They could just move it up. But that easement is is uh, you can't. Well, build the structure's that. not an easement. Just the driveway. Just the driveway. Just the driveway. So How much room do we have in the front? I mean, fair amount. It says 80 feet to the corner of the building. Right. We, as I said, the northwest corner of this building, so it's the upper <coughs> left-hand corner of the building on the page, is up against the easement right now. Oh, well, the building's up against the easement. Yes, it is. Oh, not, not just the pavement. Not just the pavement. Okay. The building is sitting within a foot of that easement. <laughs> Additionally, it would it would be tough to shift this layout to the north, since that northwest corner is 
is pinned up against the grading of the stormwater pond. Um, we do have a, a small retaining wall to be able to construct that, that dry aisle that goes around the north side of the building. Um, shifting it further north is only going to encroach into that existing pond further. Um, so it makes it, it makes it difficult to shift this building and drive aisles and, and overall layout to the north to decrease the, the variance that would be requested. Um, not so much in addition to the existing easement, the, the existing grades themselves um, kind of don't allow for that just because you're, you're, you're pressing into that existing pond where it starts to drop off. It's gravel now, right? Yeah, for a portion. But if you look at that grading plan, the northwest corner where it's coming around the, the north side of the building doesn't encroach into the, the slope of the pond a little bit. So we have to do a small retaining wall in that quarter, corner to be able to allow for that dry valve to be constructed around the north side. Yeah, a lot of that driveway is within the easement. And mm -hmm. I'm not seeing where the structure itself is in the easement. The structure itself isn't. Up against it. I thought you said that. I thought you said it was. I thought you yeah, said the structure. It's up against, against it. it. It's not in it. Yeah. If I, if I extend, if I understand this correctly. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to follow the lines too. If I, I extend the easement line further got, to your retaining wall. I guess the point is that you could do pavement on the easement because it's not a structure. If it ever had, if it ever had to access the stormwater pipes, which may never ever happen, it's digging up pavements, not not taking down the building. So we could, might be able to minimize that variance somewhat if you could move that building to the north. Is what, is what the board is saying. The easement line you're referring to is this line right here. Right. Mm -hmm. And the second part of that line comes up here. Unfortunately, the graphics that are on the plan clip that line off. But if you extend these two lines where they meet, this corner of the building is sitting on that easement line, or within the foot of that easement line. So again, connecting this line right here. Okay, so you don't show that on our map. I don't see that on the map where they extend through that. Well, from the number of revisions that happened, somehow the graphics on the plan are laying on top of that, that mm -hmm. easement. So it's blocking out part of the easement. But if you extend these two lines, that's the easement we're referring to. Can you show that to me on my map? Yeah, yeah that's what he's Well, you and I are seeing where the easement goes around that. That's, that's, absolutely, absolutely, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It looks like it. Right. If those lines go straight, I can see what he's talking about. But, but, but it almost it, seems to indicate but, but that it looks a like to the that, northwest. It's got like a triple hash, then a straight line, triple hash, and so on. It looks like it goes around the building. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the line that's proceeding to the north dead ending in that um, 
one that's running right on the uh, east side of the 12-foot asphalt drive. It would be odd that they pinched that easement at that point, though, isn't it? You see how the easement looks like it's... We're assuming. Yeah, we, we, in other words... I'd like to see a drawing with that corrected on there and highlight it so everybody's of the same opinion. Yeah. Well, there, there are two, there's two existing stormwater easements that, um, that are shown on the plan. The one that Brian mentioned is the one that cuts over the angle of multiple yeah. If you look at our site plan, there's a second stormwater drainage easement to the town of Webster, Library 9967, page 205. And that is this, this corner here. And it basically follows the edge of our proposed pavement parallel with it. And our edge of our new proposed pavement is just within that easement area and it's basically parallel with it. The, that being said, the easement is existing, but to move the building and layout to the north, the grading itself prohibits that, <coughs> as well as also trying to explain. To drop off too fast? It drops it off too fast into it drops off to the, to the yeah. you know, uh, stormwater management area. But if you see the overall shape of the lot, the lot actually gets narrower the closer you go to Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. So to move the whole package to the north, the closer to Ridge Road, as Mike is saying, the left-hand corner of the, of the project where the retaining wall is, that ends up in the pond as you keep sliding things forward. Um, we'll close the public for I don't think anyone's going to call and say close the public portion of this meeting. <coughs> uh, pursuit 617.5 of the Environmental Court will make a motion for a type 2 seeker. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I, I think we could go round and round about whether or not we can move that building forward a little bit. But um, what we're looking at this is 75 feet is required. We're looking at, we're looking at 8 feet. An eight foot variance. Correct. Um, I now this is just my opinion. I, I know I know this board generally tends to want to minimize variances. But I don't see any negative to getting closer to the building, but if they push it forward and they're getting into slopes and putting pavement on easement, easements and so on, that's a negative. Whereas I see, whereas moving it back, I don't see any detriment to that. Even though we have, although we hate giving variances if we don't have to, I don't see the detriment of getting a little bit closer, eight feet closer to that building. I do see some detriment if we force them to push it forward, put pavement on the easement, tamper with the slopes to the detention area, and so on. There's, there's some negatives there. Okay, you, you follow my logic, and you, you may or may not agree with me, but that's I look at it. From a practical point of view, well, I, I, I built, so I, that's, that's the way I look at it differently than some people. Um, well, I see your point that the, the easements is going to be probably more of a problem than the variance to an internal structure on the parcel overall. If these things hadn't been separated originally, then uh, we wouldn't even be here. So, to that extent, given the added expense of trying to build the retaining wall and you're putting, you know, stormwater retention means that you want to have permeable surfaces, and we're now getting away from that and putting impermeable surfaces in instead because I can't imagine you're going to have green space between the two buildings even if the variance is minimized. So I don't know what we accomplish in this instance by by doing this. Um, I, I, I see the point, but I'm not sure that it's the best way to go in this 
this particular parcel. To, to Don's point, though, we don't know exactly where the easement is with respect to the building. Am I right? Is yeah. that, you'd like True. to see that. Okay. Do you hear where he's coming from? According to the maps we're looking at, it looks like there's more room than you're describing to us. Is it possible to provide us with a map showing the easement maybe highlighted? Because right now the easement looks like it's going around the edge of the parking lot. Or, you know, the, it's not even close the, to the building. The, the proposed drive aisle is 12 feet on the north side of the building. The building itself is not within that easement line. The easement line is parallel and is... I don't have an exact measurement off of it sends up and then it comes across yeah, here. This is the line. But that's on your map. That's not even shown on our map. That's the case I'm I'm making. Yeah, and, and I, I, I know exactly where he's coming from. You're asking us to make a decision when the, the, the map isn't clear to us. And I'll get that map part of the record. How many different uh, pieces of property are make up that corner? Did he say four? So well, it's the whole plaza. So the whole plaza is four on four different lots. Mm -hmm. So we grant it. We grant variance request that goes with the, the the lot. There's no guarantee that just mm -hmm. if in the event that those lots are sold, those lots go to the same person. They can go to four separate people. Absolutely. And we always ask the question when we're, we're granting a variance because that variance is uh, transferred to the, to the next owner, what's the impact on that variance in the future? Now, we never ask the questions whether or not the building could be decreased in size to decrease the variance request. Those are things we, did, we never even considered asking before because we were told there wasn't going to be any need for any additional variances when we granted the use variance. Well, to your point, see, the, the bays, well, I'm not a car wash hey, expert. Maybe so, I mean, those are those questions that we never asked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just so, so it if it would help us ask the question, <laughs> how wide those bays need to be? I mean, Can they be made? Yeah, I, would, I, would, I don't know. Well, the, the question would be asked in a way, I mean, are we at the limit for what the, that structure has to be? I mean, are those the dimensions that those bays have to be? Can those d dimensions be reduced to, imp to lessen the impact of the variance request? The car wash industry recommends the dimensions that we Recommends. Have. We are, we are actually the tunnel part of this, which is the longer part of the building. We are on the extreme minimum on the, on the length of that tunnel. So, so what is the min, minimum requirements for, for, the, for those bays? 16 feet. That's the minimum. Well, you got to get a car in there, plus you got to get all the gear in around that goes around the car. You, you the just use the word required, mm -hmm. and then you re recommended. Yep. So, and then you said that's the, the minimum. Yeah, and the self, I can give you a little bit of an education on car washes because we've had to educate ourselves as we've designed this thing. The laser wash is a stationary wash, so you pull it in and the wash mechanism goes around you. And to contain that, house that, you need 16 feet of room. A car is only uh, 8 feet wide, typically. If you get a truck in there, it's a little bit wider. But to get the gear in there so it can accept a bigger vehicle, you need the 16 feet of clear space. That's, that's width. That's width. Okay. What about, so, length? What about length? How long does it have to be? Well, the length doesn't impact the variance, though, does it? It does, it does on this corner. The tunnel, though, that's not the laser wash. Oh, the long tunnel. Okay. okay. The long tunnel, I just said a minute ago, we are on the extreme minimum length of that. There's no dimension on my drawing for that. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I've got a dimension. I think it's. I think it's. Is there? Is is it on a different? <clears throat> I think it's. I think it's in the um, 85 foot range. Typically, these tunnels are 100, 110 feet, and we've had to talk to the suppliers for these tunnels to see if we can contain this all this apparatus in this 80 foot 
or 85 foot length tunnel. So we are on the minimum end as far as the length of the tunnel. But what I was going to say before I started answering questions about sizes of bays and stuff, if it would please this board, we would be um, willing to table this application tonight and come back with a more clear drawing on the easements and what our practical dip difficulties are in sliding this building further to closer that, to the That would help us out a lot because okay. we're, we're going to make a decision without having ever, all the facts clear in our mind. Yeah. So you requested the table till the next meeting? Correct. Can I make a request? And, I, I, and I would actually do us, like, like to request the, the minimum requirements that that car wash has to be. Yeah. Is that is so, that something that, that you provide? provide? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, please get us the maps in advance. We've had two or three applications tonight where we were handed maps on the spot and we're fumbling through papers trying to make sense of them. So Josh is usually pretty Josh. good and he will remind us and he will yeah. get it out of us plenty of time ahead of the meeting. Okay. So uh, at least five days before the yeah. five birthdays before well, the meeting. Yeah, like one of them we got this evening. I didn't even have a chance to check my email before I came in tonight. So uh, so that would be what? Ten fourteen. Okay. So the applicant wishes to table to uh, October 14th, uh, excuse me, where am I looking? Thank you, yeah, October 13th, October 13th. Is that, that, that enough time for you? Aye. Okay, so I'll make a motion to table on behalf of the applicant. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, all right, I appreciate it. Um, we'll see you at the next meeting. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. concludes tonight's meeting. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, next meeting, as Catherine uh, pointed out to me, is October 13th. We'll see you then.